What's up guys, welcome to this video. Today we are going to be replacing all of the seals in the intake manifold, or the connect the intake manifold to the engine in the K5 Blazer. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because the front and rear is basically just the silicon bead, and on mine it leaks oil like a sieve. Like it's, it's it makes the vehicle basically undrivable because it leaves like a six inch puddle of oil every time we take it anywhere. So today we're gonna fix that. So let me show you guys what I bought. Um, stuff you're gonna need. This is a Felpro gasket kit. Um, I bought a new 180 degree thermostat just in case so we can replace it. Uh, I got an extra uh, distributor gasket even though this comes with one. Um, I just bought an extra one just in case. Uh, this is our TBI gasket. Um, you don't need this if you don't have a TBI. If you have a carburetor, you're going to use a standard carb gasket. And this is the gasket for the uh, thermostat or the, um, what's it called? Water outlet is what they call it. So these are kind of the five things you need, more or less. Um, in addition to that, we got some black Permatex over here, which is this guy. You're going to need that uh, for making the remainder of the gasket surface and kind of just gluing stuff on. So we're going to start disassembling the top of the engine and I'm going to show you step by step how you get everything out and then we're going to get it cleaned up, reassembled and hopefully that is going to take care of our oil leak. Um, I'm also going to do an oil change at the end of this video. Basically you're opening the top of the motor and stuff is just going to get down to the oil. There's really, you know, you can protect for it but uh, it's always good even on a fresh oil change to go ahead and do another one um, after you do this to make sure you get all the, all the crud out of the motor. Plus, it'll give us the opportunity to see how bad or sludgy or good this motor is. Um, so I'm going to put this camera on my head and we're going to get started. So first step is pretty easy. We've got to remove this intake. And so zap that off, pull that off, and set that aside. So now you can take a closer look in here. This is our intake manifold. Um, you can see there is a, um, I believe, water temperature sensor here. We have a ground here. This is obviously our upper radiator hose we're going to have to remove. Um, we have all of this um, kind of TBI computer wizardry here uh, that's going to have to come off or at least get unplugged. Um, we also, I don't know if you have to, but we're probably going to remove the valve covers and we're going to have to pull the distributor out again, which sucks because I'm getting tired of pulling it in and out. Um, but hopefully this will be the last time. Uh, so the next kind of major thing is to figure out what all we need to do to get this TBI um, off of here. So I guess the first thing we can do is we can yank up on that, pull up on that, remove this guy. And uh, we're also going to go through and clean everything. So this is kind of a trick I like to use. Um, basically, you get a piece of cardboard, lay it out, and that lets you write down what everything is as you set it apart. Um, some of the names you're going to see are probably not the correct name, not the technical name. Uh, it's just what I used to remember it by. Um, this is probably a little bit overkill for this project, but when you're working on transmissions or engines, this is absolutely the best way to do it. Since we've gotten so proficient at it, I think the next thing we're going to do is remove the distributor. So I'm going to unhook the coil, then we're going to unhook all of the uh, plug wires. And since we're not doing anything super funky with them, we're probably just going to leave them attached and out of the way. So we're just going to do this type of deal over here and this type of deal over here and the next thing we can do is we can remove the hat so that's coming out so based on previous experience just to make this a little bit easier what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a witness mark uh, right here on the distributor and then we're going to put a witness mark right here on the intake 
and these two make a straight line. That'll make it easier for us to set our initial timing later on. Um, and we're gonna have to put the engine in the top dead center, but we'll do that later. So unhook these two things from the distributor. This is the coil and this is the control wire. And now we should be able to basically take this coil and we'll shove it in there, get it out, out of the way uh, a little later. But now we can take out the distributor. That's gonna be a, um, we have a 14 millimeter bolt. So basically, once that's loose, you just slide your hand down in there and slide this bracket back. And now, should be able to remove the distributor. Next thing we're gonna remove is this guy. This is just another uh, vent. We're just gonna take this out. And let's see what else we got here. This hose runs down to that evap container stick that in there this runs to this sensor it's another vacuum line um, this is vacuum to our brake booster we're going to need a wrench i doubt it's, uh, it's going to be no. bigger wrench to uh, take that off So this goes to that little one-way valve that then goes to the canister over here. So that's where all of our power brakes come from. Ah oh man, that thing is on there. Okay, let's take a look at this. So down here we have a TV valve, which is held on with two zip ties. Um, and up here, is our throttle, uh, which is held on with some sort of pin. So back here we got two fuel lines. You need a 17 and a 19 to break them loose. And then should be able to just... Next I guess we can unplug the TBI unplug this sensor whatever it does let us get under here unplug that guy now I think our TBI should be at least removable so to move this throttle body out of the way, there's these three bolts. So we're just gonna. And now this should, oh, we still need the. So there it is. I gotta figure out how to unhook this TV cable. But there's the base gasket, we ordered a new one. Looks like maybe it was leaking a little bit. At least the intake manifold looks fairly clean. One small piece of housekeeping, this came off the this is the back port on the on the uh, TBI it connects to this sensor over here this gray one so I just popped that off next thing I did was I unhooked this little temp sensor um, we're probably gonna replace it because that base isn't supposed to move around okay next step is I want to take off these two bolts in this bracket and that allows us to remove kind of all of this TBI goodness. So there's our upper radiator hose. I tried to pinch it off without dumping too much coolant. Next step is to remove this cable bracket, which is held on by one bolt through to the head, which is this guy, and then one bolt that's just a, a blind bolt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that right in there. Now you don't have to remove this oil sensor as long as it's up out of the way, you are going to have to, we are going to have to remove this, this coolant sensor or this, um, sorry, this is the, the heater hose. So I just used an adjustable wrench, remove this. Uh, if this is a factory truck, you might have an actual quick connect instead of this like weird pipe thread thing. 
um, but either way you just disconnect it and from here on out I think all that's really left are the bolts that hold everything in place <laughs> Now, for lack of a better term, these things fucking glue in. Um, and so you're gonna need a little pry bar. And that's what these tabs right here are for, actually. Still kinda stuck. There we go. And now, for the third time, you should be able to remove Intake. Preferably not dumping all of our coolant in the oil, but probably dumping a lot of our coolant in the oil. It's fine. We're gonna drain all that oil out anyway. Here's our cleaned intake manifold. We got most of the crud off. Important thing is all the mating surfaces are reasonably clean. I'm gonna wipe this down one more time. Um, and then a few things we're gonna take care of. First of all, I ordered an EGR block off plate. Um, all the other mission stuff has been taken off this truck except for the cats I installed. So there's no need for it, it just takes up space. We're gonna put a block off plate right here. Um, I also ordered a new temperature sensor. I thought I had one, but I did not. So for the coolant temp sensor, um, we're going to need to drain some more coolant out of the bottom of the truck, or maybe it's slowly draining itself. I don't know. Um, but we're going to still have to clean up kind of everything in the valley down there. Um, hopefully try to capture some of that coolant so it's not just uh, chilling on the ground. And then before we reassemble everything, um, so this is our EGR, just so everybody understands what I'm talking about. Um, this thing is an EGR valve. Uh, it's no longer being used. These studs are no longer being used. Um, there's also this vacuum port, which I think had to do with the EGR system. What we're going to do is, um, I'm going to try to find a bolt that's this diameter, and we're going to just install a bolt there, um, so we don't have to deal with that anymore. We're going to put a new thermostat in here. We're going to clean up this housing, install a new gasket, get that in. Um, there shouldn't be anything that stops us from doing that right away. Uh, let's see. That's pretty much it. Mostly you got to get this cleaned up uh, and ready to go back in the truck. So here there used to be this fitting that was clearly a vacuum fitting for something that they put a bolt in. Um, so instead of reusing this, this is just a standard 3 8 NPT plug, a little bit of thread locker and now I don't have to worry about this ever leaking. The next step is we can put this back in. This is our thermostat. I got a uh, 180 degree thermostat. Gasket goes on top and on top of that goes this housing and on the far side of the housing, so the driver's side, or um, yeah, the driver's side goes this stud that a ground clamp mounts to and on the passenger side goes this bolt. Now this bolt is clearly not, is the right thread but the wrong head. Um, somebody clearly replaced it at some point, but it's what we have and it wasn't leaking, so we're gonna put it all back together the way it was. Now, there's gonna be different approaches, but what I do is I put down a coat of RTV around um, the coolant passages and all of the intake and the exhaust, and then I lay the gaskets down. Now the gaskets are marked this side up and rear, so they're mirrors so you can install them on either side um, and the trick is to make sure all of your bolt holes line up and that you kind of press it down everywhere and now i like to give the rtv you know like solid 10 minutes to cure because you don't want these gaskets to move um, in the meantime what we're going to do is we're going to zip tie this stuff out of the way 
and I think we're gonna need new o-rings because this one already fell off somewhere um, probably when I was removing it and the other one looks pretty bad so we might have to turn to our o-ring kit to find stuff that'll work okay I dropped it in crisscross torqued it down 30 foot-pounds uh, nothing too crazy we're gonna go ahead and reconnect um, everything that we can reconnect uh, but obviously there's a few things that we're still missing um, and uh, when those come in we'll be able to install them like the EGR and the coolant sensor um, but for now we can keep right on trucking along so we're still waiting on Amazon to drop off our temp sensor and our EGR block off but in the meantime what we can do is we can uh, install all the rest of the components which is what I've done let me kind of go in here and, and show you guys so nothing nothing super special we got this bracketry over here on the left is in our heater hoses front and rear are in our throttle cable our TV valve are all hooked up um, next thing we're gonna do is set up the distributor and everybody and their mother has their version of doing timing this is my version of doing timing I don't want to argue with people about how much total timing you need or how much initial timing you need this is a TBI truck it does all of that for you um, and if you want to reprogram it you can but unlike carburetor small block Chevy's here all we have to really do is find top dead center and so the first thing you want to do if you're resetting timing on a TBI truck on this truck it's over here there's a brown or tan wire here with a plug sometimes it's over here some trucks it's on the inside of the glove box behind the glove box type area this disconnects the timing uh, advance from the computer which means that we can actually find and run at zero degrees before top dead center um, so what I've done is I've removed the spark plug from number one we're gonna bump it over and the way I do it is I put a little piece of paper towel in the hole and on the compression stroke it's gonna push that paper towel out and then you basically use a wrench uh, to bring you as close as you can to, to uh, top dead center. And I'll show you guys that when we get there. Um, this job is a little bit easier with two people. Unfortunately, I don't have anybody here today. So I'm gonna have to one man it. Basically the only downside of that is I can't see the notch and turn the wrench at the same time, or it's very difficult. And so I have to basically just guess at it, look, make adjustment, guess at it, look. But first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the uh, paper towel in there and then bump the key and make sure we're on the compression stroke okay so I'm gonna put a light down here if you look down there you can see there's a bigger V and a white timing mark that's top dead center so when that line is dead nuts in the middle of that V which it is right now that is exactly zero degrees top dead center um, which means now we should be able to drop in our distributor base uh, and set it and the way that, that works I'm bring you guys back over here so here's our distributor base and this is called a distributor rotor up here and what you want is you want this rotor pointing to the number one cylinder and the thing you have to remember is that these gears are helical which means you have to kind of pick a spot about 15 degrees before or counterclockwise from where you want and drop it in and as it drops in it rotates down like this now if you remember we also made an alignment point that should help us get our timing really really close to where it's supposed to be and we're also going to try to match up that alignment point but as you can see um, if I set this down the rotor spins independently of the timing the timing is controlled by this the other thing you have to keep in mind is that the inside of here there's a drive that drive is for your oil pump it's very important that uh, it seats as long as you get the cam to dial in properly you can then rotate the uh, crank of the engine until this thing plops right down um, that's usually the way I do it I'll show you guys here in a second okay so our number one cylinder is here this is the driver's side cylinder closest to the radiator that's, one. that's where we want our um, cap to point and so you can see I've moved this little piece out of the way and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to drop this in like that so see that's pointing over at like 
I don't know, cylinder, what is it, one, three, five, like maybe five. So now we're gonna pick it up, we're gonna set it a little further forward and try to find that next tooth. Too far. There we go. So now you can see we're pointing at cylinder number one, but if I take you guys off, I don't know how good the low light, you can see it's not fully set. And the reason it's not fully set is because we haven't engaged the oil pump. And what we're gonna do is we're going to turn over the engine until the oil pump engages. But what we have done is we've meshed the cam timing with the uh, rotor. As you can see, the rotor does not rotate. Um, and that's all you really need to do for timing. The oil pump is just a drive. It doesn't need to be timed so we can turn the engine over and get it to drop in. Uh, one, one trick about that, turn the engine over very slowly, just like, and all of a sudden you'll hear a thump. If you've gone around more than one full rotation or uh, 180 degrees on that, and it still hasn't dropped in, you've gone too far. Sometimes, depending on how clean or dirty your engine is, it might help to have a friend gently apply pressure downwards. There should be no resistance. It should just drop into the top of that, um, top of that pu uh, pump drive. Okay, so I rotated the crank. As you can see, the rotor is now pointed somewhere over here, but it's in time with the uh, motor, which is all that really matters. And if you look down there, you can see it's dropped in. So now we can reach down here and slide our little retention lever forward. And remember those marks we made? So if we set it right about there, when we crank the motor on and turn it on for the first time, um, we should be pretty close to zero. So one thing that's important is don't forget to plug in. There's two plugs here. I don't know where the other one's, oh, the other one's on the coil. Which went where? Where did my coil go? Yeah, I fell the fuck down here somewhere. This is not great. There it is. So, there's our coil. Now, the coil has a couple of plugs on it. I have no idea where this one goes, but this one goes back into the distributor and the coil is supposed to have a bracket, but mine doesn't, so it just chills right here uh, for now. Just out of the way. And you're gonna need a 14 millimeter. These ratcheting angle wrenches are super nice for this sort of thing, because you can do that. But uh, it won't get it tight enough to hold it in place, and for that I use a stubby, because these fuel lines just wanna be in the same spot as your hand. So right now it's kind of snuggish. Uh, we can still rotate a little bit. Fortunately, obviously, we can't fire up the motor until we uh, get our coolant temp sensor in. So Amazon delivered my new uh, coolant sensor and the EGR block off. So this is what you get in the EGR block off kit, this little gasket and this little chrome piece of shit. Unfortunately, if you look right here, this is the old EGR gasket. And if you line this up with that, you'll see the bolt holes don't really fit. And not only that, it doesn't do a very good job of covering this up. Like it's gonna leak from up here based on this design. It's pretty fucking obvious. So I ended up making a much thicker, much beefier uh, version with a plasma and a drill. And as you can see, it has much better coverage and lines up with the bolt holes. And we're actually just going to reuse that gasket right there and uh, install this into the truck like that. Now, I tried to do it right. I tried to buy a piece. Um, I should have just cut one out from the get-go because it's that's like, I don't know, 316 steel. It's not going to warp. It doesn't care about the exhaust heat. Um, so I'm going to get that screwed down. And then I think we're going to be ready to fire this bad boy up. Alright, you can hear how it runs like shit, but right there, that's exactly zero degrees before it topped that center. So we have the distributor locked in, we're going to turn this engine off, 
because obviously an engine likes, you know, six to eight degrees at top dead center. Next thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna disconnect the positive terminal of the battery over here. Then we can reconnect our little ignition advance clip. And then when we fire it up, the computer is gonna take over and it's gonna bring in eight to 10 degrees of advance for idle and then you know up to 36 or whatever uh, total ignition advance. So let's do that. So here we go. You can hear engines running smooth. We got our plug put back up. Not really leaking anything. I had a loose hose clamp, dumped some coolant earlier. That's what the water's from. Um, I'm gonna check the valve lash next because it's still kind of uh, kind of hammery a little bit. But sounds good when it revs up. We're uh, getting good oil pressure. Let's take a look in here. We got 30 psi oil pressure. Battery's charging. Engine's starting to warm up. Full tank of gas, ready to roll. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Uh, there's already a couple of videos out. There's a playlist for this truck, and we've got more videos coming soon. My name is Max. This is Max Works. I love you guys. Peace.